What's up, Internet? Today, we're going to go over the problems and fixes of the Gazelle Tent lineup. Now, I've seen a lot of channels do reviews on Gazelle Tents, and most of them have had them for a few days or maybe a couple of outings, and then they give it a review. Well, we're going to do things a little different because not only have I been using them for years, I have owned the T4, the T4 Plus, the T8, the T-Hex, and the G6 Gazebo. So one of the complaints that I've heard is they're not very good in the wind. Well, this is just simply not true. You see, before Gazelle came out with the hub design camping tent, there was ice shanties. And ice shanties see some of the worst winds and weather that you can imagine. And they hold up just fine. The trick to the Gazelle tent is definitely all the stakeout points, including every hub. Now, because of the fast pitch of the Gazelle tent, it is easy to not do the hubs every time you set it up unless you're going to stay for more than one night. But do understand that if wind kicks up, it most likely will collapse, and that is just how they work. Now next you hear about is leaking. Now there's a few spots where a gazelle tent will leak. At a 3000 millimeter hydrostatic head, you would actually think they would leak a lot more because believe it or not, that's really not that high. Now there's three different spots that they leak. One is where the zipper flap turns the other direction and in a hard enough rain, it can leak right there, but nothing serious and nothing anybody can't handle. The next, if the roof is cocked to the side a little bit, there is a seam that is underneath the roof flap that if shown, because there is no seam tape, it will leak. But again, not too bad. And this is simply fixed by taking some seam sealer over the stitching. The biggest leak that you can have, and it does take a minute for it to happen, is actually on the pouches located on the sidewalls. Now the reason that they leak is because they sew the gear pouch to the outside of the tent and then seam seal over the pouch itself. What happens is water runs down the side of the tent, goes into the stitching, soaks into the pouch, and after it starts soaking through, you're pretty much going to flood out your tent depending on how much rain you're dealing with. This is also a simple fix. If you go on the outside of the tent and you put seam sealer over the stitching at a fair amount, this will not happen at all. Now another complaint I've heard is that on the roof where the string goes through to help you pull the roof down, that bugs can get in because there's a gap. Well this is actually a simple fix. It's never happened to me, but if you take a run to your hardware store and get some rubber o-rings, basically untie the rope, put the o-ring on, tie the rope back up, and there you have it. No more bugs. Another common complaint I hear is the lack of an e-port. Now, I understand that most people are used to having an e-port where you just stick your cord through the sidewall, but the Gazelle has a completely Velcro floor. Pretty much the entire floor where it connects to the tent is an e-port. Doesn't matter where you want to put it, so this one is easily answered. Now the problems I just mentioned are pretty much across the board on every Gazelle tent except of course the gazebo. Now let's talk about individual tents. The T4, every problem it has, we have pretty much taken care of in the first part of the video. Now the T4 Plus has the same problems and with the front screened in area, the front door, I really wish they would put some sort of rain flap on the front of the zipper. Now I understand that this is supposed to be like a porch, but let's face it, most people don't use it as a porch. Another complaint that I hear a lot is that there's no zipper at the bottom of the door. And that actually surprises me because the fix would be very simple. All you would have to do is take two pieces of Velcro corresponding to each other and sew a zipper so that way you could insert it into two pieces of Velcro. Then you would have a zipper front door. Now why Gazelle doesn't do this, I don't know. You would have to write them about it or maybe you can make your own, that's up to you. Now the T-Hex, the only real problem with that one is any sort of load on the roof can potentially fully cave it in due to how big it is. Now personally, my favorite is the T-8. And the reason is pretty simple. Basically, it's two T4s put together. There's no internal poles, and the interior space is actually bigger than the T4 Plus. The only problem I personally have with it is they only have them in orange. And not everybody wants to run around and put up a tent that looks like a road cone in the middle of a forest. And another problem they all have is the standard stakes they come with. Personally, I think they're absolutely junk unless you're on a beach or putting them into soft sand. If you hit any sort of obstruction, they definitely bend. But if you go with the Overland Edition, 
they give you better stakes. So obviously, Gazelle realizes this. And of course, the last one is the G6 Gazebo. Well, honestly, I really have nothing to say about it. It's a gazebo, it works great, and as long as you stake it out, it works perfectly. Now, with everything I just said, it sounds like I'm really bashing on Gazelle, but actually, you're quite wrong. I absolutely love my Gazelle tent, and all of them, actually. Yeah, they had their corks, but they're a simple fix. But, the materials are good. They're actually very tough. Yes, they're big when they're folded up. If you don't have the room, don't get one but you can always stick it on the roof. But I do have a few complaints. One of my biggest complaints that I just don't understand why they don't do is some sort of port in the wall or like a stove jack for a diesel heater. Gazelle, if you're seeing this, you literally have a series called the Overlander and you don't have any ports or stove jacks for a diesel heater in the sidewall. You might want to think about that. And a few friends of mine have had the cheaper copycats and let me tell you, they do not work. I do not care what video you saw where they do. The problems that I've seen them have are unbelievable to say the least. Bad stitching, leaking everywhere, just not a good product. Of course, there's multiple companies that make different hub style tents. Some of them look like disco balls at a space station that are more like an ice shanty than anything else. Drop it. But that doesn't make them good or bad. I just don't know anything about them. Well, hopefully, this video helps some of you out or helps you make a decision. I will put the link to the Gazelle website down in the description. And remember, we do not do any affiliate links, not even our sponsors. We do not want to make a dime if you buy anything from anyone. We believe that all sales should be between the company and the customer, which is also why we can say buy it, don't buy it, doesn't matter to us. And you all have a good one. I'm your Huckleberry.